Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to Erasmus University. My name is Jim O'Donnell from Arizona State University. Uh, this is my first visit to Erasmus University, so I feel a little uncomfortable welcoming you, but welcome anyway. Uh, the miracle of IFLA is that we are all strangers and friends and come together uh, in these gatherings uh, as, uh, as friends and colleagues. I want to say a word or two about what we are doing here and introduce some friends who will help us get the proceedings started. There is a great rush of attention and enthusiasm throughout the world for open access publication, open content, open science, open scholarship, and consequent discussions of the issues that arise when you have those ambitions. This satellite conference begins in part because we were noticing that so much of the discussion about open is tactical, short-term, and focused on the means to the end rather than the end. It's business models, it's technology, it's CC licenses. Um, it, the discussion can easily get bogged down. Second, we have discovered that it is surprising to what extent the move to open can also have the effect of reinforcing some of the traditional patterns of privilege and authority that are in academic publishing already. But the goal of open access publishing, the goal of open scholarship, is indeed, always has been, for those of us who've been engaged in this for 30 years, uh, inclusiveness in many dimensions. Making information available to those who need it, to those who can use it. Uh, the implications of open publication are important in a variety of areas. One small area, for example, I am very much involved with the Offline Internet Consortium. This is a group of organizations that work to deliver internet quality information to those who do not have access to internet in remote regions, in politically oppressed regions, people in post-disaster or post-conflict situations. It's still almost half the planet does not have broadband. But we in uh, OLI are enthusiasts for making that content available, but open content, uh, openly accessible material is vital for that kind of activity. So we brought together today and tomorrow a group of speakers from around the world uh, to look at the implications of open, the ways in which open can, can fulfill its deepest strategic ambitions, um, the things that we should be looking for in order to make, uh, to make the best use of the economic, social, and technological developments that we can, uh, that we can imagine. Um, I think you will agree we have an interesting, diverse, and uh, stimulating program, um, and we hope that there can come from it uh, some commonality in our discussion of things we should recommend and advocate for in this, in this domain. Now, it doesn't simply happen miraculously that people appear in a room in the Great Hall of Erasmus Building at Erasmus University. Uh, on a morning in August. Um, it, takes, it takes a village, it takes a small city, um, it takes a fair amount of, uh, of activity. Um, we are organizing this from the Academic and Research Library section of the International Federation of Library Associations, so this is an IFLA satellite pre-conference. Uh, we've done so in cooperation with our colleagues at the Erasmus University Library, um, and I have to express my deep thanks to them uh, for many rescues, some of them as recent as 15 or 20 minutes ago. Um, it's been a lively morning, let's put it that way. Um, but it's also a delight, having been working on this for many months from a distance, uh, to come and get to meet some of our colleagues at last, um, whom, uh, whom we've been collaborating with, and to see the success that, uh, that we've had. Um, I'm going to turn the microphone over for a few minutes to my colleague Gulchen Cribb from Brisbane, Australia. Uh, she is the chair of the uh, IFLA Academic and Research Libraries section. Um, and then a couple of more greetings and we will begin with our first presentation. Gulchen, it's great to see you. Welcome. Thank you, Jim. 
think I'm not that tall. I need to use this here. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. It is so wonderful to see all of you here from all over the world. Just like IFLA, just like Academic Research Libraries section, of which I am the chair, this is a truly, truly global audience. We have speakers from one end of the world to the other end, or from the beginning to the other beginning, I must say. The, the number of countries, the number of cultures represented here, it is just amazing. I'm just so touched. And I'd like to join Jim saying that we are just so grateful to Erasmus University Library for the team have been fantastic in putting this together. You couldn't have asked for a better partner. They just ran with it. So thank you very much. But I must also acknowledge that this is not only an IFLA ARL section uh, conference, but we work very closely in partnership with many other sections of IFLA. Uh, I don't want to leave anyone out, so I must look at this. Um, first of all, continuing and professional development and workplace learning uh, section of IFLA, Alan Bryan, who is here. And the Serials and Other Continuing Resources section, Ted Westerveld, who is here. Health and Biosciences uh, section, Library section, Beth Ketterman, who is here. And IFLA Open Access Group, we have both Patrick and Fiona here, who will be speaking later on. Women, Information and Libraries, Viva La Jolie. And Max Planck Digital Libraries Open Access 2020 Initiative, Colleen. And unfortunately, she couldn't be here due to a passport problem, and you'll hear more about passport problems. And uh, British Library, of course, we have Ilkay Holt here. So we want to thank all of our partners in coming together to organize this conference, and I hope that these partnerships will continue. We cannot do anything without partners, without collaborators. We are all in this together. And the topic of this today's um, conference, of course, inclusiveness through openness, it touches on everybody, all of us. It is not just about the wealthy countries. It's not about uh, the West but it's about the global south, it's about everybody. Because without inclusive openness, nobody is going to do well. In fact, it takes people backwards. It's not sustainable. And this is again contributing to the SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals. I'm not going to take too much of your time. I'm going to hand it over to wonderful University Library Director Lucinda Jones of Erasmus University to say a few words. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. My name is Lucinda Jones, and I'm the Director of the University Library here at the Erasmus University. A very warm welcome to the Erasmus University of Rotterdam, to the people in the room, but also to all of those online. It's wonderful to see so many people that are dedicated to the theme we're going to talk about today and tomorrow, inclusiveness through openness. I do hope you get a chance to visit our library building, which is just next door, um, either this week or the next time you're in the Netherlands. Should you be interested in a visit, the library tour will be held from today. Should you be interested to visit today, sorry. The library tour will be held from 12.15 to 12.45. And in case you don't have an opportunity, I would like to tell you a little bit about our library and our views on inclusiveness through openness. The current library building was built in 1968 and fairly recently renovated to better meet the needs of our guests. Even though the building is a monument and all changes have to adhere to strict regulations, the library has become an open and welcoming space in which new and old are artfully unified. Moreover, during the last renovation, we specifically focused on accessibility of our building to ensure it's more welcoming to users with a physical disability. The transparent and intuitive layout of the building ensures that our students have easy access to the thousands of study places situated throughout the building. 
At the heart of the building, you will find the Rotterdam Lace Cabinet, RLK, as we like to abbreviate it, <clears throat> with its collection focusing on literary fiction and the city of Rotterdam. <clears throat> Even though the library's collection is almost completely digital, the RLK collection brings not only physical books into the building, but also the RLK members who are mainly not of the university community and who live across Rotterdam. And they frequently visit the library to make use of our reading room and the various activities that RLK organizes. This openness of welcoming others than students, lecturers, researchers into our building enhances our inclusive ambitions. Additionally, we are actively working on achieving more bibliodiversity in our collections. As the content manager of the Erasmus University, the library focuses on being open and accessible while supporting researchers, lecturers and students to create and disseminate knowledge. The library safeguards the university's knowledge and makes the university's output openly accessible to everyone within the university environment and to anyone outside the university community who wants to immerse themselves in our content. We focus on all aspects of open content, open data and open publications and are currently very active in research data management, open educational materials open access and citizen science. Last but definitely not least, our library has an open culture and believes in talent and personal leadership regardless of one's background. Our job application procedure is anonymized to offer equal opportunities irrespective of age, sex, disability, race, ethnicity, origin or any other status. All our staff speak English and Dutch, so to help all our users in both languages and to make everyone feel welcome. I look forward to the discussions on this important theme and hope that by exchanging views, we can embrace the tools and knowledge necessary to make all libraries inclusive by being open. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lucinda, and again, thank you, and thank you, Annika van der Kramer, uh, who has been our closest partner in your organization for uh, heroic, uh, heroic work here. So, so uh, we proceed to our uh, our keynote address. And Charlotte, are you ready? Good. Let me. I need to tell everybody a little bit of a story. Um, we have a little bit of a story, um, but it's an illustrative story in its own way. The world is not as open as the world should be as we believe the world can be someday. So therefore, there are passports, there are visas, and every now and then passports and visas reach out and bite people and make them, uh, make them unable to travel as they had hoped to. Our keynote speaker fell afoul of this just a few days ago. Um, he has fortunately been able to provide a video alternative, uh, and our colleagues here at uh, Erasmus are ready to, to produce that. In the meantime, I wish to introduce Charlotte Ween of Elsevier. Uh, Elsevier has been generous in providing support for this conference. We thank them uh, for that. Um, and we had invited already Charlotte, um, who herself has just escaped from a slightly less open world of traffic jams in, uh, uh, in the Netherlands, uh, ask her to introduce uh, our keynote speakers. So Charlotte, thank you and welcome. <laughs> 